Thank you for this uh, very nice invitation. Uh, I see that the audience is very diverse, so let me start by asking a question just to be sure who all know what. Um, so can you raise your hands? Uh, how many of you have heard of this company called Google? <laughs> Last time I asked uh, this question, somebody on, in the audience said, uh, when I get home, I'll Google for it. <laughs> OK. so. Uh, so here we go. So the two big achievements of Google are that uh, were that uh, uh, they gave us a way of doing search that is robust to spam using their uh, great idea of page rank, and uh, um, they gave us uh, and they they completely revolutionized uh, advertising, and that forms their business model uh, because of which they can bring us search uh, for free 24/7. Uh, so, uh, and, and uh, uh, if you type, uh, say, Vioxx uh, as, a, as a keyword, uh, then here you get uh, uh, the results that are relevant to it as search results, and here you get uh, advertisements uh, that are, are given by, by companies uh, to be uh, uh, put right next to uh, this word, uh, this keyword, uh, Vioxx, and similarly, Advertisers have uh, given, uh, provided, uh, you know, ads to be shown with all the other keywords, and there are so many of them because it's not just one word; it could be multiple words. Anyway, so the revolution is the following: that uh, uh, Google managed to solve the most central problem in uh, advertising, namely how to match merchants to customers who want their products. Okay, in a very targeted way. And the difficulty, of course, in doing this matching is how to find out exactly what the needs and desires of a customer are. Uh, I mean, you can put uh, uh, thousands and thousands, uh, make everybody see your, your ad you know, by putting it on a billboard, but that's such a waste. Uh, not everybody is going to buy that car. If you could target it to the specific people who want the car, won't that be much more efficient? And, uh, and, and their big insight was that a user's search query is really a, a succinct window into the mind and the needs of a user. That's what the user is thinking about at this moment, whatever they are searching about. And so why not uh, give ads related to this search query? And uh, the solution is now to auction off the queried keywords to advertisers so that uh, uh, they bid for keywords, and uh, Google makes some money on the side as well. And this converts uh, a giant undefined matching problem of matching um, customers to businesses into a gigantic auction. And indeed, uh, Google is the world's biggest auction house today, uh, auctioning off uh, billions of keywords uh, every day. And uh, this has... Uh, not only brought us search for free, has revolutionized our lives because we keep using Google all the time, uh, but it has also led to huge profits for Google, which went from being a $27 billion company in uh, 2004 to more than a trillion dollars today. So that's all based on this one market. Can you believe it? The AdWords market, uh, which is uh, ephemeral and uh, non-existent in, uh, non -existent in uh, in uh, real uh, atoms and, and blood, right? Uh, uh, it's digital completely. So that's the new, new era that we are living in today. Um, so the big question is, how do, does Google allocate keywords to advertisers? And uh, the, uh, what happens is that advertisers bid for specific keywords, um, such as uh, Yox or pizza or uh, or maid service, or uh, or Honda car, um, and then uh, uh, Google uh, uh, displays the ad of the highest bidder, and that is good from the economic point of view because that's an efficient solution according to economics. Whoever can make the make the most value out of that uh, particular uh, uh, ad being there gets that ad, and that, that value is uh, demonstrated by the amount of money they are willing to spend. And that way, the, the whole economy benefits the most. And of course, uh, it also maximizes Google, Google's revenue. Okay, so, so 
So this, is their, this was their basic solution, um, namely display the ad of the highest bidder. So for now, just for uh, this talk, let's assume that Google will uh, display only one ad, even though you saw many ads displayed, um, just for simplicity. And then Google can either charge the bid or the second highest bid, uh, just like a Wickery auction, uh, to make it incentive compatible and so that people don't go around fishing around for the right uh, bidding bid to, to put in so that they are out there. Um, and this solution was being used for the first couple of years, from 2002 to 2004 or so. And then uh, they realized that there was a, oh, and here it is. Uh, uh, these are the ads. Uh, so normally this is considered the most important position. So this is where the highest bidder goes, the second highest bidder, and so on. And typically, he pays the, the amount that this guy has bid, he pays the amount that this guy has bid, and so on. And what would you have expected here? Uh, pharmaceutical companies that are willing to pay uh, 10 or 20 cents to be here, but instead, what you see is uh, lawyers, 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 lawyers. Because they are happy to pay 50 to 100 dollars to be here. Uh, because uh, Google, uh, at some point, uh, managed to hurt a lot of people through their, uh, oh, sorry, Wyox managed to hurt a lot of people through their, uh, through their uh, uh, drugs. And these people want to recoup uh, some of that money through, uh, well, uh, through lawsuits. And of course, uh, uh, so what happens is that uh, if a user who, who clicked Yox uh, clicks on this ad, then the amount of money, maybe the bid of this guy, goes from this lawyer's account to Google's account. And that's how Google makes its uh, revenue. Yeah? Maybe this is a little premature, but and, and not on the talk, but Vioxx is a, is a trademark term. So the, it, its use, the, the, does fair use govern the use of, I'm, I'm going, getting to the notion I, of what keyword is and how keyword relates to lang human language and the intentions. I, I, so as I said, you know, keyword is, there are more keywords than there are words. Uh, and, and even multiple words form a keyword. Uh, you can say uh, pepperoni pizza. You can say uh, women's clogs. Okay, that's not one word. So I, I don't know what their definition of keyword is, but it's anything that you type is, is a keyword into uh, Google search uh, box. Okay, so, so it's, it's for, me, for me, that's the definition. Uh, I'm not into that uh, research topic, so. So linguistically, it's very primitive. Okay. Yeah. So it's a string. It's a string, yeah. So, uh, okay. So that, that's how Google makes its revenue, okay? And that's how it makes Billions and billions every quarter, believe it or not. Uh, OK, so, but there's a problem uh, with uh, this uh, uh, way of uh, selling uh, the ads, so, uh, put, uh, namely just the highest bidder gets it. Uh, and this was realized around 2004, and we became aware of this question at, the, uh, at that point. Uh, the point is that when a user, uh, when, a, when a business uh, creates an ad group uh, and says what their keywords are and how much they are willing to bid for each keyword. They also give their daily budget, how much they are willing to spend in a day, uh, so that you know they don't get bankrupt in one day's uh, allocation of ads. Probably, okay. At least the small businesses are well aware of this issue. Maybe the big businesses don't care. The more ads they get, the the better. OK, but there are lots and lots and lots and lots of small biz businesses that go on to Google because they never had any outlet before Google to advertise their products. Um, OK, so, so what happens as a result of this daily budget? Uh, and if you still give uh, the, the ads to the highest bidder, what goes wrong? So let's see this through this example where uh, there are two bidders. One is bidding a dollar for the query book and CD, and $1 for the query CD, and there's bidder two who's bidding 99 cents for book and nothing for CD, and both of them have declared a, a daily budget of $100. And suppose on this particular day, uh, 100 book queries come first, and then 100 CD queries come. Just happens to be an ordinary day in our lives. Uh, and so let's see what the greedy algorithm would do. Uh, so comes a book query, and bidder one gets it because he's, 
He's paying a dollar for this query, and the second bidder only 99 cents. And the rest of the 99 queries also go there, and Google makes $100 here. And now comes a query of the kind CD. And bidder one has no money, bidder two doesn't want it, goes waste, and so do the other 99. So Google's revenue is only $100, and these last uh, 100 queries are, are wasted. On the other hand, um, if uh, the optimal way to do this, if you knew the future in advance, uh, what queries are going to come today, is that you would give uh, the first 100 queries to the second bidder and make uh, $99 from that, and uh, the second 100 queries of CD to the first bidder who has bid for CD, and, and another $100, so the total would be 199 which is about twice as much. So you're forced to be at most half the offline optimal. Okay, and yeah. Second bidder, why would they pay 99 cents and not zero? Because where here? Yeah. I'm I'm assuming that you uh, the bidder just pays what they have bid. Oh, I see. Simplicity first. No. Okay, algorithms. Let let jump into algorithmic ideas based on a very simple model. Yeah, no, forget second price for now. All those bells and whistles can be thrown in later. Okay, so so we must incorporate budget because we are being forced into 50% of the revenue, and when the revenue is billions of dollars, you can see how much is being left on the table. Um, so, and this is also important because a very large fraction of the uh, advertisers are budget constrained. The, the, the budget uh, curve is very heavy-tailed, and you want to deal with these guys. These guys never had an outlet, no advertising means before. Finally, they are having, and they are, it's having an effect. Even the maid who, needs an extra job, pays Google about $10 to get another uh, service uh, possible. Uh, you know, the pizza store in the corner or, or, or the guy who sells extra large shoes or whatever have you. Um, so, um, so, so, so these have to be adequately uh, addressed. Moreover, I mean, everything is happening online and in real time, which is the topic of this workshop. Um, and so the solution has to be very, very efficient, real time. No, no, no big, uh, heavy solving LPs or anything. And very, very simple solution on top of whatever Google is doing so far. Okay? So this is the problem that we faced in uh, 2004, uh, and we solved it uh, 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 in 2005. We being uh, Aranyak Mehta, uh, Amin Saberi, and Umesh, and me. And these two were my students at, uh, at Georgia Tech at that time. And uh, Aranyak is now at uh, Google, I mean, at uh, um, Stanford. Uh, I'm at uh, Irvine, so we are all uh, West Coast based at this point, which is great. Uh, OK, so what we started off with uh, was, uh, oops. Oh, and of course, everybody knows Umesh has uh, been at Berkeley for 30 years, so I don't have to announce that. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so what we started off with was a simple framework that captures the essential features of the of this problem, so that we can arrive at an algorithmic solution, okay, and uh, and we can add bells and whistles later, as I uh, mentioned to Evdokia. Uh, so here's a very very simple problem. Assume everybody every uh, uh, bidder has a daily budget of one dollar, and these advertisers uh, give bids for keywords that they are interested in. They specify a keyword and the bid. Keyword and the bid, keyword and the bid, and the, their budget is $1, okay? And queries come, and they have to be selected and sent to an advertiser to maximize Google's uh, revenue. That's it. So, and we want to use online competitive analysis, obviously, which is to compare the solution of our, pro, uh, of our algorithm in an online sense with the, whatever the best offline algorithm uh, solution is. Okay, uh, and we already saw that greedy has a competitive ratio of a half. Uh, or when when I showed you the books and CD thing, and it can be forced into a half, no more. Uh, so what's our algorithm to beat half? Um, so any any algorithm will achieve a half. I mean, sorry, this is a trivial algorithm which achieves a half and no more. So um, what's our algorithm? We'll use the agent's bid 
and the fraction of the budget spent at any moment. Okay, as, as, as time goes on and we have to decide which, which agent gets the next ad, we'll use their bid and the fraction of leftover uh, of spent budget. Okay? And the important thing in this algorithm is what's the correct trade-off between these two parameters uh, so as to get, quote unquote, an optimal online algorithm. And I'll say what that is. Uh, so here's our function f of alpha is one minus e to the minus one minus alpha. Okay, so obviously in the beginning, this function is large, and as more and more of your of a bidder's uh, budget is spent, it goes down all the way to zero. Okay, so that, that's that's the multiplier. So our algorithm is multiply the bid of this advertiser with f, this function f of the fraction of the budget spent. Okay, and give it to the highest bidder in this sense by their modified bid. Okay, uh, and that's it. That, that's it. That's the simple algorithm. All you have to keep track of is one number. Do one one uh, 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 f function uh, evaluation and one multiplication. So it's very very lightweight solution, and uh, it has a competitive ratio of one minus one over e, which is more than fifty percent. It is sixty three sixty four percent something like that. But we have to make a, a strong assumption that the bids are very small compared to the budget. The budget, like I said, for in that example, was $100. The bids were $1. That's what we want, something. And I cannot imagine that somebody's bid will be like half of the budget. That means they'll get two queries and be done. So we can get rid of those people up front. Uh, anyway, so that's the overwhelming case anyway. Uh, and this is a an optimal competitive algorithm uh, in the sense that not even a randomized algorithm can beat this one minus one over E. And of course, this is the worst case bound. Okay. Uh, it's also good in practice. And moreover, it is, as I mentioned earlier, it's simple with a very minimalistic, very lightweight solution. And for this reason, it had a huge impact in the marketplace. Uh, it uh, was not only utilized as a, as a heuristic. Uh, they, they didn't necessarily use this function f, but basically they used big, people use bid scaling, not only for ad auctions, but for display auctions. And this framework that we gave uh, gave uh, uh, an essential starting point for thinking about many budget constraint auctions for many ad products. Yes, sir? Does this in any way change the incentives of the bidders? And oh, that's a very big question, so sorry. I am uh, time constrained here, so let me get, just do the algorithms. And uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, good question. Uh, big answer, sorry. Uh, the bidders are aware of the algorithm? Uh, not necessarily. So it's I don't, I, Google doesn't tell, I mean, Google is, uh, would never tell us that they are using our paper. So it's redacted from their contracts? I have no idea. So, I mean, these questions are not my purview here. Uh, I, I just want to show the algorithmics. Okay. Um, okay, so the reason it had this impact was it's very fast, has low on memory, no extra communication, you know, just what you wanted. And it also gave rise to a huge amount of new work this paper did. Um, there were uh, all through from 2005, there's even a workshop at, uh, that's held in the uh, San Francisco area. Um, and there are uh, hundreds, hundreds, no, tens of researchers that have been hired by various uh, search engine companies that work on uh, many, many related uh, uh, and general uh, problems uh, related to this. And, and these are all apparently, many of them are implemented, used, experimented, and so on. Okay, so the point is that this, this solution has its roots in pure theory, in matching theory. So let me get to that. That's what I really wanted to convey to you today since this is a theory talk. Um, so this, uh, the underlying ideas come from online bipartite matching. So think of uh, a bipartite uh, graph where you have girls and boys, and girls and, and boys, and the girls are sitting out there, and the boys come one at a time. Sorry, the boys used to be sitting out there. OK, the girls are sitting out there, the boys come one at a time, and uh, and Right, the boys come one at a time, and uh, as soon as the boy comes, um, 
um, we know which girls he can be matched to, and we have to match him right now, within seconds before the next uh, boy comes. Match away. And then the next boy comes, and we cannot match him because both these girls are already matched up. But if he had uh, done things better in the past, we could have matched this guy also. Okay. So we got some matching. There's a better matching. But we are working online. We didn't know what's going to come in the future. So there was no way of getting everything. So again, any deterministic algorithm will do at least a half, because any maximal matching is at least half the maximum matching. And uh, can be forced into a half. Uh, and this al uh, for this problem, we gave a randomized 1 minus 1 over e factor algorithm. Again, the same bound. It comes up a lot in online algorithms. So, uh, and the algorithm is particularly simple, namely just uh, randomly permute these girls once and for all. And then each time a boy comes, match him to the highest available girl in this order. Okay. And that will give you 1 minus 1 over e factor. And that's optimal. Okay. So this was in the backdrop. That's why we got so attracted to this uh, Google problem, because in particular, it's a, this is a simple case of AdWords problem where all the budgets are $1, and the bids are 0 or $1. And after this came, a, uh, in some sense, an even more relevant work for our purposes, which was due to Kalyan Sundaram and Proust. And they deal with the case that, uh, of B matching, uh, uh, where uh, there's a, uh, uh, an asymmetry. So the girls can, match, can be matched only to one. Sorry. The boys can be matched to only one bo girl. The, the guys who are coming can be matched to only one girl. But the girl can be matched to B boys, where B is a very, very large number. Okay. And this, this is like the adverse problem where the bids are B dollars. Sorry, the budgets are B dollars, B being a very large number. And the bids are either 0 or 1. Either the girl-boy pair cannot be paired, or they can be paired. Okay, And here's their algorithm, which is very, very simple and uh, interesting. So assign the next qu query, so, or the next boy, to the girl who, has me, who he likes, and among those he likes, the one that, he has, uh, that has been married the least so far. Right? Or in the, words, uh, as a, as in the Google uh, language, Assign the next query to the bidder who wants this query and has spent the least so far. This is called balance. And it achieves 1 minus 1 over e factor. And again, this is optimal against even randomized algorithms. This is a simple deterministic algorithm. OK? So let me show you what, how balance goes. Uh, so in come these 100 book queries. And they are equally given to both of them because they're here. Both of them are bid $1. Obviously, because that's the, what the problem is. Remember, all the bids are either $0 or $1. Okay. And then comes the uh, CD queries, and they are, all go to bidder 1, who has bid for them, and bidder 2 hasn't bid for them. And so the revenue is uh, $1.5, uh, not $1, as in the greedy case. So this is 3 fourths competitive, and in the limit, it's 1 minus 1 over E. So so what we did was we first gave a new proof for balance. And uh, that's what I will show you. And that's my main take home message from algorithms today. Uh, then we modified this. Uh, it's an LP-based proof. We modified this for, for bids in an arbitrary range 0 to 1. So here bids are either, either 0 or 1. And here bids are in the, in the interval 0 to 1. And then we used, uh, uh, obtained the dual of this to obtain the trade-off function between bid and fraction of leftover budget. And I will not go into this part, because it's particularly uh, long, time consuming. But this is a, a beautiful thing in itself to see. And I think I should be able to show you in five minutes, which I certainly have. So here's a new proof of balance. Again, what's balance? In comes a query. Bidders have spent some amount of their money so far. Uh, look at the bidder who wants this query and has spent the least among the bidders who want this query. Give it to that guy. And for this analysis, let me assume that the bidders all have a, a daily budget of a dollar, and each bid is zero, it's epsilon dollars or zero dollars. right? So uh, opt will be the best offline algorithm. The, the 
um, revenue of the off offline algorithm and ba balance is the uh, revenue of this algorithm. And the main case is that opt is n. So each of the bidder spends his entire dollar. So let's just look at that case and see wh what is the best we can do. We'll show that the algorithm will do at least n times 1 minus 1 over e. Okay. And I'll, I will prove it to you that this algorithm balance will do at least n times 1 minus 1 over e. So it's a 1 minus 1 over e factor algorithm. Okay. So the idea behind the algorithm is to upper bound the number of bidders who have spent less. So some bidders will spend their entire dollar. Some bidders may spend uh, almost nothing and some intermediate guys. So you want to upper bound the bidders who have spent less. Okay. So how do we upper bound that? So assume that we pick a, a, a large integer k and let si be the set of bidders who have spent money in this interval, i minus 1 over k and one, uh, i over k. OK? And let si be, let the cardinality of si be xi, denoted by xi. So we must first constrain x1. x1 is people who really didn't spend, right? They are really hurting our, uh, the revenue of uh, our algorithm. Then we'll try to constrain x2. Then we'll try to constrain x3, and so on put as much constraint, force it to be small, 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 so that the later guys are big, 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 and we show some uh, bound, right? OK, so this is S1. They spent well, uh, at most 1 over k. This is S2. They spent at most 2 over k, 3 over k, and so on. This is the spending of, of algorithm. And next thing we do is we partition the revenue of uh, the algorithm according to, into layers, okay? And I'll say this epsilon dollars is in layer i if at the moment this epsilon dollars was spent, the bidder had money in this range, i minus 1 over k and i over k. Is that okay? So the bidder had money in this range, okay? So for instance, uh, this is layer 1. Uh, this is all the money that were, such that when it was spent, the bidder had money at most 1 over k. This is spent, when this was spent, this money, the bidder had money at most 2 over k, uh, between 1 over k and 2 over k, layer 2, and so on. So, so now we start writing our LP, and it's not hard. So optimum here. So S1 is the guys who end up spending only 1 over k, right? But these queries were also given to the offline opt, and offline opt managed to allocate all of them, right? So when this query came, which was allocated by opt to somebody here in S1, uh, it must have been allocated, because there is a, a whole bunch of people. Uh, well, because, because these guys, these bidders want, want this query, right? These bidders want this query. That's why opt managed to allocate it. So, so the algorithm also must have allocated this query. But where would it have allocated it? Not, not to this bidder, because, because it's, it's, uh, uh, this, uh, and the algorithm only went this far. So all of these were allocated somewhere else. So they must be allocated somewhere else. Where would it be allocated? Well, this bidder who wants this query has spent at most 1 over k. So there must be a competing bidder who has spent at most 1 over k to whom this query went. And that must have gone into this layer 1. Right? This query, which was, which opt assigned to somebody in S1 who has spent only 1 over k so far did not go to a bidder here because there was a competing bidder who wanted it and has spent even less. So that competing bidder must be in layer 1. So all of these queries must go into layer 1. That gives us our first constraint. That So for, first of all, it's very easy to see that layer 1 is at most n over k because each layer is equal. 
So layer one is at least one, uh, at most one over k, and the first constraint says that x one, the number of people in the set one is at most n over k because this whole money, which is x one, must fit into layer one. Then we go to the second uh, set of bidders who spend uh, this much in the second uh, bracket, and uh, let their number be x two. Oops. Uh, so, so think of this as layer. So layer two is money such that bidders had had this much when they spent. And what, what happens here? Layer two is at most n minus x1 over k, because, because this is not in layer two. So layer two is everything else, n minus x1 over k. And the queries in, in, uh, in this part, s1 and s2, whatever opt gave here must go into layer one or layer two by the same logic as before. So therefore, x1 plus x2 is at most uh, whatever money fits into layer one and layer two, and so on. And so in this manner, we get an LP, and we solve it, and we show that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, at least uh, n times 1 minus 1 over key, uh, e. And basically, this is a, a very interesting, uh, I think, um, rather powerful uh, algorithm design, approximation algorithm design schema that came up in the context of uh, of uh, a facility location problem in this work with uh, uh, Kamal Jain, Mahadian, Markakis, Amin, uh, in uh, a little couple of years earlier. And it's a family of LPs that help you give uh, uh, an upper bound on the approximation factor of an algorithm. So this is a, a very powerful way. If you can put in enough constraints from your working of the algorithm, you can actually derive analytically the approximation algorithm of, a, of, a, of an algorithm without actually combinatorially deriving the approximation algorithm for a completely combinatorial algorithm, which was, in our case, a facility location. OK, so that was this. Uh, and. Uh, the larger theme, of course, here, which you are all aware of, is this uh, uh, super great markets on the internet that have uh, given rise to completely new ways of doing uh, economics. Uh, and these have taken over our economy by the neck. Uh, many of these are trillion dollar companies or close to clear trillion dollars. Uh, and some of them are getting there, such as cloud computing. And each one has uh, incentive questions like the one that uh, our friend asked, or other questions, as well as algorithmic questions. And so there is a huge amount of uh, uh, possibility of doing very creative work here and having big impact. Uh, so that, that's it. Yeah. So for the heterogeneous budget case where everyone has different budgets, um, is it still possible to extend? The oh yeah, 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 yeah. That is this is the main case. The other thing is a simple addition to this case. Yeah. And so you could have different people with different valuations as well, different budgets. Totally. Yeah. The whole. Within this same totally. Yeah. Yeah. And different bids, not just uh, zero or epsilon dollars. And uh, different budgets, and uh, yeah, M and many other. I mean, you can also uh, add in uh, extra things like uh, uh, the you you have case lots rather than one. You have click through rates and taken into consideration. You have uh, you don't necessarily charge the bid, but the next highest bid. All of those can be either with small heuristics or directly. Uh, with rigorous analysis being taken care of. In the case of the girl versus boy example, if the incoming girls are also stochastic, boys are also stochastic. They have done all of those things. I mean, there are like 100 papers there. When I mentioned algorithmic work, it's uh, so many industries started with this because it was all relevant to these uh, heavy duty, multi billion dollar markets. So there are many, many things got done. Some, some totally relevant, totally, some relevant into the future somewhere. Yes, sir. So the bids are fixed. So uh, yeah. you, can you allow contingent bidding? That is a revision of the prices as I go along. I, I notice that I haven't been successful. Haven't been matched, and then yeah. I say, oh, let me.
me change my bid upward or I've been you know, matched too much. I, mean, I am not aware of a worst case analysis for that. But uh, I don't know that even Google, uh, Google allows you to enter and exit during the day. I don't know if they allow you to re revise your bids. They must. I mean, what do they lose, right? Uh, Money. Why? <laughs> because you, you, if you're locked into a high bid, then perhaps, uh, and then you notice that, uh, oh, maybe I'm paying too much for this thing. You know, that, like, that's the reason they go for a, a, a bickery kind of thing so that people don't thrash around looking for uh, the right bid, quote unquote. And this was happening before they did the wickery kind of thing, where you pay the next higher bid. But with that, you know, you are sealed off from, uh, from having to pay your... Because then you could have an interesting situation where you take refreshingly the perspective of a bidder, yeah. and as opposed to maximizing the revenue for Google, they hardly need any more. Really? And <laughs> How will uh, you make money in the stock market if they don't make revenue? I, I, I'm very good at losing money on the stock market. <laughs> <That's, laughs> we want to cure that, right? We want to uh, help you with that. Some sort of gaming way. You know, you so, make... you know, these, these gaming issues are, are very central to this whole, all these markets. That's why algorithmic game theory is such a big player in all of this stuff. And there's a lot and lot and lot of work on those, exactly these questions. They're, they've been thought about. Uh, to the, I don't know, fifth level, <laughs> you know. So I'm sure we can find, uh, I, I, I have looked into some of them, I have worked on some of them, but I'm not up to date with all of them at this point. But uh, a small search will tell you answers to most of your questions, I think. Yeah. So, thank so, you. Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, how realistic is the assumption that uh, the distribution of the adverb, of the queries is Unknown. I mean, usually Google should know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So indeed, and, and that was one of our open problems. It was solved by Devanur and Hayes. They gave a little O of one, so better than one minus one over E, if you uh, if the queries come from a distribution. Okay, but you cannot entirely rely on that because there are up and down events all the time, which take you into the worst case. So you want something that's good from a. Uh, when, when your queries come from a distribution, and also whenever you switch into some uh, uh, current event of the day, which makes you go into the worst case. And, and there are even, uh, even approaches for that. So good question, but all, all dealt with. I mean, these are you know, worked out because there's <laughs> so much at stake. You had a question. Yeah, so why is it the fraction of the budget spent rather than, say, the amount of budget remaining? Because Different people have different, uh, because you, 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 you want them all to finish to zero together, whether they have bid $1 or $200. I don't know. Why? I don't know. It works. <laughs> if you have a 1 minus 1 over E uh, analysis for this idea, then that works also. <laughs> but I doubt it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Extend to combinatorial bidding is at all. Oh, where you can uh, uh, the bids are uh, combined for if I, I bid just for co-occurrence of two keywords and the other. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Co each keyword is 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 a set of words. So you can bid for uh, for uh, um, you mean like large shoes and small socks. Yeah, no, I, I bid for someone who is, who is uh, looking for CDs and books. Ah. And that competes with others who only bid for books. And oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Each person is bidding for many keywords, has a common uh, budget for all these keywords. OK. And maybe different bids. So you can even bid for, as, a, as this bidder one did, he was bidding $1 for this and uh, $1 for this, but he could bid $1 for this and 50 cents for this. Oh, well, that's or uh, link. That's not. Yeah, well, uh, and meaning somebody says books and CDs. Yes. I'm sure they'll get this query as well as that query. Yeah. Or I don't know what Google does, but okay. surely that uh, comes into the and is just thrown out and you be it becomes book and CD, I think. Yeah. I, I believe. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's up to Google, I think, but Google does the right thing always. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Uh, 
So thank you so much, and thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah.